going into a slightly different question now. Do you believe in God? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I had the privilege to go record a private workout with Andrew Jones, and I got to sit down with him and ask him the questions that I would have loved to ask him as a younger athlete. So if you're a younger athlete who wants to do the same things as him, like McDonald's All-American game, Jordan All-American game, becoming a Division I player, ninth on the all-time scoring list at University of Texas, and becoming an overseas player, as well as overcoming many great obstacles throughout his life, then this is the interview that you're gonna to wanna to watch. So how did you deal with self-doubt, like before you ever got your first offer? And then how did you have confidence as a kid? As a kid growing up, you know, um, you, you watch a lot of other people in your position, a lot of kids growing up around you who are experiencing success early. And um, as a kid, I, my biggest thing is I wanted, to be, I wanted to be really great, bro. I had a lot of idols in basketball, like Kevin Durant, AI, all those guys that I looked up to. And um, what kind of kept me confident was, you know, always playing, not, not trying to focus on, you know, the long-term goal, but focus on like my immediate future on what I got to do now, which was just to get better and, you know, really fall in love with the game. I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing else. I know it's not really motivation, or it's more discipline. Mm -hmm. But still, what drove you to work hard when you were a kid? Uh, you know, like my, my, my home circumstances, you know, um, my circumstances at home were a bit difficult, you know, with my, with my parents and um, just how our dynamic was. And then also my sister was very, very uh, talented player. Like my sister was like top five in her class, McDonald's All-American, you know, Jordan all brand. So she was experiencing a lot of success in the basketball realm, and I wanted to, you know, compete or match what she did. You know, I wanted to be just as good as her and also have a story that she had. So, yeah. like, she, seeing her do well, seeing her experience success drove me to want to, you know, do the same thing, even though, like, the odds were against me. It, 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 it was a healthy competition, you know. It was like, man, my sister's so good, like, yeah. renowned as a basketball player, all these offers, and, like, I wanted I wanted to experience what she was going through. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I, I loved watching her growing up. Like she's like one of my favorite players. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. enjoying like I have somebody who's extremely good at basketball. Like in my household. Like I, I want I want to see her do well, and I also want to you know achieve the same things. So just bend. Yeah, so don't hinge over. So obviously you wanted a D1 offer, like everyone wants a D1 offer, like yeah. every single person. Yeah. But what was it like when you got your first, and what school was it, and what was it like when you did get your first Um, offer? Like the feeling of it. My first Division One offer was UTA, UT Arlington. And um, it, it, was a, it was a surreal experience because um, I think I was like going into my sophomore summer. Uh, I had just grew. And um, you know, I actually, like, my uncle was on the coaching staff and he made me work for it. Like, he was yeah. like, even though I'm here, I'm, we're not gonna hand you anything. You're gonna have to really, like, work hard to, uh, you know, earn your spot here. Yeah. And, like, when I got it and they sent me those letters, man, like, it was, like, more of, like, a, okay, a little relief, but, like, I'm not done yet. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there, there's still more to be done. Like, how, how far can I really take this? Yeah. You know, so that, that's kind of how I felt when I got my first offer. Like, I was excited for the moment, but I wasn't content or satisfied. Yeah. Even just from y'all's workouts, like I, this is my first workout I've seen of y'all, but I can mm -hmm. see that accountability. Like mm -hmm. you're talking about your uncle, it made you work for it. It's like I can literally see the accountability in y'all's workout, workouts, the way y'all do things. Yeah, yeah, man. So that's tough. And that's just how we are, man. We wanna, like when we in the gym together, like we all had our, our moments of fame and in our individual journey. And then when we get in between these lines, it's more about like, are we here just checking a box or are we in here really trying to get each other better? Cause we all professionals now yep. and we all want to you know get signed we all want to you know continue to feed our family and, and have this experience of playing basketball so it's like i want to surround myself with people who are on that same mission you know who's on that yep. same grind to where like we, we get in between these lines we're gonna work out together all right we, we're gonna push you we're gonna compete like all right you want this drill i'm gonna win the next one yep. you know what i mean and we just and that's just how i feel uh i get better you know i had an option to use a shower but nobody used them I was, I was funky. I might have hit my pits a little bit. I might have, uh, uh. Obviously, you're a D1 player and mm -hmm. you play overseas. So for a kid who wants to do the same thing as you, what would you tell someone who's not there yet? No offers, hasn't played overseas, obviously. Yeah. Like, what would you tell them to do to get to where you got? Um, a couple things. One, I, I will study the game as much as possible. I will find, you know, a, a bunch of different players that you, like, you enjoy watching yeah. and also who could be similar to your 
your style of play. And then try to find a way to fall in love with the game, like every aspect, every nuance. Like there's an obsession that you kind of got to have when you're on your journey to, you know, becoming uh, the player that you want to be. And then also like live in the gym. Like it's, sometimes you don't know how to work out on your own. As a yeah. kid, you don't know some of the drills to do on your own. But like you can also go and like have a friend. Like I said, have somebody who can like that you, that you can hold each other accountable. Yeah. And y'all both are chasing the same dream without like any jealousy, without any like animosity toward each other. And, and that's hard to find, yeah. you know, just trying to build a village to where like, man, I really enjoy playing basketball and I love getting better. Like yeah. that's the mindset you got to have if you want to make a jump to, you know, becoming, you know, a division one player or like a high level, you know, high school player or anything like that. Yeah. You know that guy. So we just step back. At what point did you know for yourself that you actually like knew God? Um, I would actually say there's been a, a few traumatic experiences in my life that um, that have definitely shown the, the strengths of what he can do. Um, I was in a car accident when I was nine years old and which left my, my father paralyzed for the last 16 years. And like us being able to survive and, you know, make it through that like traumatic experience and then move to a whole new city where nobody knows us and grow and become these, you know, influential basketball players that we become, I knew that was for a purpose. And then when I got I didn't know at that time until I got older, but what really enlightened me to like his, his, like his grace was when I got diagnosed with leukemia. Like when I was sick and like there was a point of like hopelessness to where I didn't know if anything or I was going to be able to survive or live at the peak or the pinnacle of my career. Um, that that let me know that like I have a purpose here, and it it through basketball, but it might not be at a NBA level right now. Yeah. Like you have to re-channel uh, what you did to sustain this success early, yeah. and figure out how you can be more impactful outside of the game. Yeah. So that's what made me kind of more aware of you know his grace and what he has for me as far as like my my route in life you know yeah, i can tell you still have that same belief now though yeah man you ain't gonna game it though you know give me a chance you know, give me a chance ah uh, anyways <laughs> if you knew everything you have to go through like knowing now like looking back which is was there anything you changed would you do anything different man i have no regrets man yeah. like i think my i think my journey that I went through and how I was, I've always had an underdog mentality. Yeah. Um, growing up before I became successful, you can ask my, you ask my friend here, man, I, I was the most delusional, most like, like craziest kid coming up. Like I was 5'8 and these guys were already established and I'm telling them I'm gonna be better than you. Like, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna be the best one to come through MacArthur. I'm, yeah. Like I'm gonna be a McDonald's All-American, I'm gonna be a Jordan All-American. Like, just, I'm just delusional. People used to look at me like I was crazy. But I was like, y'all don't see it. I'm really just talking, but the way I work, it's gonna happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the stuff that I'm doing, like how hard I work and what you seen today, yeah. is like this is like grassroots, childhood stuff. Like sometimes you branch off to new trainers when you get a little stature and you think, okay, I'm gonna go work out with this guy because they know this. We gotta understand some of these guys that train these high profile guys, they, they've been knowing them for a long time, so they know their game. My father knows my game. Yeah. You know what I mean? He knows what I'm good at. He knows my weaknesses. He knows where I need to get better. So when you have somebody like that can really like critique your game in a positive way with like without feeling like they got to step on your toes or like you feel like it's going to be like an argument, yeah. like that's the best feeling to have, you know? Like that makes the environment around you like safe. It paid to win. That's butter. That's too easy. During your battle with the community, like what did you think about God during that time? Um, I had a lot of time on my own to reflect and I, I want to say, I, I don't want to say like I never questioned, but I, I, I wanted, I wanted to understand. Yeah. I need an understanding on what it is on, on why this happened. And then once I, once I, after a while, I tried to not play the victim. Um, my, my focus was, you know, I was getting a lot of a lot of support throughout the country. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm getting a lot of notoriety. Yeah. People are caring for me. All right, I'm, I'm focused on getting back on the court. Yeah. 
like my, I'm motivated to get back on the court. I'm gonna do whatever it is that I can each and every day to get back on that court. And um, I journaled a lot. Um, I, I wrote my experiences on what I was going through daily. And um, at that point, I just knew that like, okay, that I'm getting better. I'm getting better. He, he wants me here for a reason. Yeah. Like there's a bigger purpose yeah. going on like outside of, you know, me being, you know, the, the caliber player I was. So like, I wouldn't necessarily say I, I, I doubt it, yeah. but you know, you, ha you have your moments where you don't understand. And that's why like, you got to embrace the unknown in a lot of these situations and, and, and just walk by faith to, you know, and it's hard, bro. It's like, it's literally easier said than done. And at that time, I didn't know I was doing it. Like, there's a lot of times where I don't know, actually know I'm doing it until I, I sit back and be like, okay, breathe. Like, let me, let me understand the situation outside of like my emotion and outside factors. You know, yeah, yeah. like it's yeah. very, it's very hard. I'm not saying that it's like something that like I just mastered. I'm just like the most, like the greatest at it. I have that. I have my moments where I'm down and I have my moments where like things are uncertain, but then I also go back and I, and I pray for, you know, like one forgiveness, forgiveness and then guidance, you know, like clarity, like peace of mind yeah. to the where it's like, even though I, I'm not where I want to be and my life is in shambles right now, like, I trust that if I go out there and do what I need to do every day in the right way, yeah. he's going to bless me with what I want, yeah. you know, and what I deserve, you know? I'm tired of losing, bro. I'm tired of losing. I know, I know. Yeah, it's crazy you say that because I was going to ask you the next question is, during that time, did you ever have, like, a why me attitude? And if so, how did you, like, overcome it? So you kind of answered that. Um, yeah. But so you did have that type of attitude, but how did you overcome it? So basically how I overcome it, like I told you about the obsession that I had before I became a McDonald's American about basketball, I was only obsessed with basketball. Like I was only obsessed with, okay, I'm going to get better. Okay, whatever they allow me to do, I'm going to do. And I was very, very grateful to have um, a nurse take me to this pediatric place, uh, Craig Sager's uh, pediatric place. It had a basketball goal in there. If I didn't have that basketball goal, to where they were letting me go in there. Cause I was, li I was really over age. It was really for kids. But they knew, like a lot of people in the hospital knew I was a basketball player and all that. So they kind of let me go in there yeah. when there was like, um, when there was like no kids in there. And if I didn't have that place, if I didn't have that like time to go play basketball and dribble and shoot around, I don't know where my mind would have went. Yeah. You know, I, I probably would have went in a very dark space, but I had a great family, I had great support. And I feel like that was just all God, man. I feel like he know me as a basketball player, as a, as a, like, as a person who lived basketball. And then that, like, being able to go and, like, shoot a basket, you know, like, put that ball in my hand, go dribble. Like, I maybe not be able to do nothing, but then I told myself, I said, Mama, if I do this every day, I'm going to get better. If I go out here and do this every day, it might not look good right now. It might not be good in, like, a week or two. Give me, like, a month, something might change two months, something might change, you know, and like that mentality of, you know, like enjoying the process, knowing like I have a goal, I have an end goal, but right now I can only do what I can to do today. Yeah. I can control what I can do today. And that right there kind of like changed my mindset. And like I said, I'm, I'm delusional. Like I'm telling my, I'm telling my, my coach Shaka, like I'm finna come back and play. Like, I'm going to come back and play. Like, man, you need to get your rest. And I love my doctor because he was just as delusional. He was like, you're going to play basketball again. You're going to play basketball again. I'm like, you're right. You're right. I am. Let me get out this hospital. I'm going to play basketball again. And, you know, four or five months later, I get out. Now I'm like, okay, I can't do everything. I'm sluggish. I lost about 50 pounds, 60% of my muscle. So it's an upward, it's an upward battle I got I to, gotta, uh, you know, definitely take. To, uh, to get back to just normal. Because if at that age, if I'm 20 years old, I have the body of a, like a middle schooler. And then when I get back to college, I have like, after my first year, I have a body of like maybe like a ninth, 10th grader, yeah. you know? So I red shirt. And then when I get back, I probably got the body and speed of like a, a junior. Yeah, but I go play, you know, I go play a good season. And then like, that's kind of my mindset. I'm like, all right, man, like over time, I'm gonna get better yeah. over time. I'm gonna trust my process now. It's dark. It's, it's a lot of dark times that come in it, but there's always 
gonna have beauty if you just lock in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just and just try to not to worry about the distractions. The neck got a little breeze to it, bro. It's really the back. I can feel the wind. I'm like, damn, it's low key cold. If anyone's going through anything tough, trying to overcome something, if you had like 30 seconds to tell a person one message, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them to embrace the unknown, you know, and challenge the perspectives that most people have around your circumstances. I would lock in only on what you believe in, only what you know and believe, and take advice from those that are, one, genuinely in your corner, two, in the same field or realm, and be a sponge. Yeah. Soak up as much knowledge, soak up as much information as you can, and then so try to find peace and beauty within the storm. You know what I mean? Like, if I could say anything that would help, just, you know, stay confident, true to what you are. You know, it might not seem perfect or ideal right now, but if you have a, like a delusional but like realistic belief on what you want to achieve, yeah. you'll be able to get it done. Yeah. All right, favorite food, favorite ice cream, and then we're done. Okay. <laughs> favorite food? Man. All right. I love barbecue, and then I also I love me some good pasta, man. Yeah. I love me some good pasta. And uh, favorite? Good choices. I, huh? Good choices? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, as far as ice cream, man, I'm 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 real basic, man. I yeah. love I love me some cookies and cream. Yeah, I, that's the best one. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best one. I love cookies and cream, man. That that yeah. that definitely has to be my favorite, man. Yeah, alright, well, I appreciate it. Appreciate you so much, man. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure y'all like and share this and subscribe if it helped you. Also, check out Andrew's page on Instagram and his merch, Embrace the Unknown. On Instagram, it's Embrace underscore Unknown. So check that out. Go show him some love and support. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and I will see y'all in the next video.